Well, good morning to you too, sunshine folks. It's well past midnight. Shouldn't we be in bed sleeping? For some of us night owls, I need to get these damn things washed. I mean, they're dirtier than crap. Yeah, we were John C. How you doing? I was communing on another log concerning about soundtracks and how some of them actually made me feel different ways and think about different things. And sometimes when I can't sleep, and I'll tell you, this is one of those nights that's really been driving me nuts. Neuropathy's been kicking in very hard. That it's making me itch and scratch like crazy. Next week I go see the doctor, thank God. I'll probably be put on the medications for it, but in the meantime, let's continue on with the with the uh, thoughts concerning about soundtracks. I was listening to movie soundtracks. Uh, growing up as a kid, I listened to a lot of things. My brother would be playing rock and roll. My mother would be playing country. I'd be watching on Saturday mornings, American Bandstand, and then there was so train. Oh boy. <laughs> you talk about getting education concerning about the music industry, that's for sure. What music's out there, what music can be motivating, what music can't be motivating, and what drives you crazy, and what doesn't drive you crazy. All of it was driving me nuts. But I was a young kid. How the hell was I supposed to know? This is all stuck to me. When I saw movies, there was themes, there was movie themes out there I'd listen to in there. They stick with your head all the time. Television themes were, well, they were made to stick in your head. They would have the longer versions being played on different radio stations, especially the popular television shows. Dragnet was not one of them. Adam-12 was not one of them, neither was Emergency. However, SWAT was Rock, um, the Rockford Files. Some of the music on, uh, uh, for shows produced by Universal at the time, for television, they would have. Longer version of A-Team. Um, uh, this is uh, St. Elsewhere, Hill Street Blues. Shows I grew up watching, and they stuck with you. But we came down for movie themes. That was really stuck with you. I really didn't start remember watching movies until about. Actually, I saw Star Wars. 77 in the summer. My older brother took me over to the Winnetka Drive In Theater in the San Fernando Valley. I was about four or five screens. One center hub. And they'd charge you for the car load. Now, if you're sneaky enough, you can sneak people in there. They got wise on some occasions and started charging people per person instead of per car. Instead of just charging per car. But you'd overload a car with a lot of people and they're losing revenue. So they decided, okay, what the hell? You gotta sneak people in there. We're gonna stick, we're gonna stick you in there with them. Charge it per person. They really had to hide people. The other thing that I liked, you could bring in your own food. I guess there had been times when there was being movies played uh, at the Van Nuys Drive-In Theater and the Sepulveda Drive-In Theater back in the San Fernando Valley, back in the days of the 70s. My mother would be fixing like crazy 
food that we need to have for the entire night. Back then, even the re even the um, snack bar food was expensive as hell. We'd get sodas, that's about it, but we'd fix fries. You wouldn't believe how many potatoes we had to cut and peel just to get the frickin' fries. Not to mention the greasy chicken. If I knew how to do the greasy chicken right now, I'd be doing the recipes and frying it at home. All good recipes, too. I could do the fries. I could do wedge cuts. No problem. I just got to start working on the damn chicken. But enough on that one. But you're able to bring in your own food as long as you slick the thing in there. But they would prefer you going over to the snack bar all the time to get their, their dehydrated forever hamburgers and packages. Their cold popcorn. Their watered down sodas. Sheesh, all you had to do was go to the damn store and get the damn, get your liquids and bags of chips and stuff. Put them in the back end of the car. Bring your car with the kitties and stuff. And when you get your spot, there's your picnic right there, ready to rock and roll. The thing that I liked about the drive-ins is the radio. Of course, you can listen to the radio on the squeaker box, and it's sound quality really sucked. Well, that's the only thing you can listen to anyway. I mean, you the driver's side or the passenger side, and you got the speaker, and then it's, I don't know, what are they saying? What will happen? You can see the thing happening on the screen. Now, to catch on those drive-ins, if the drive-in was close to a major thoroughfare, there would be lights all around the damn place, which made the screen dark as hell. You barely saw it. You hear it, but you could barely see the action. You had to wait for the VHS decades later. Or maybe, if you were lucky enough, they did a screening in, in the... Um, Walk-in theaters. A lot better. You'd hear it. You'd get better food. But it was the experience that people wanted to go to. I mean, to get there just before sunset, maybe about an hour, they have a playground right in front of the damn screen. Then you'd be able to watch your kids for about an hour or two if you got there early enough. And they'd be fun, and they'd be fun, they'd be funneling around all over the place, and you'd be talking and schmoozing with people left and right. It'd be a family of fun and fair. And then when it was time for the movie, you'd see the lights blink, and then everyone had to go to run, run to the car. Because five or ten minutes later, you'd see the commercials. And then you'd see the movie. The technology improved a bit when they decided to make the car radio the actual speaker. Assuming, of course, you had plenty of gas, and assuming, of course, you had plenty of battery power. You had to keep charging the car every so often by running the engine for a little bit and then turning it off. And that way, you'd be able to listen, be able to stretch out the battery. One of the drawbacks of the damn thing in the first place. I mean, it was a nice idea. If you had a portable radio, you just hooked up the um, alligator antenna to the, well, see, the alligator clip to the antenna of the portable radio, and then hopefully it was a stereo. I mean, if it was a ghetto blaster, cool. You'd be able to listen to the thing. Of course, you had better batteries in car or truck. You'd listen to the whole thing with no problem. There's no jumping either. Uh, once in a while, you'd see a tow truck coming in or someone else trying to grab out the battery cables and jump your car just to get you going home. You had to keep that engine running until you got home. Then after that, you were stuck. <laughs> but now, with the Cinefy sound system they had, it brought things closer to you. 
You're able to see the movie, you're able to hear it, you got your food, you're comfortable. So two and a half hours later, you're jumping for the damn bathroom. And you see the long line. You say, the fuck it, we'll go over to the gas station and relieve ourselves somehow. If you lived close enough to home, you didn't have that far to go. If you were went across the valley, well, that's a different story altogether. Start finding the damn gas stations or any other restaurants that had the rest that read, that had restrooms during that time. Hell of an experience. The music coming from the radios depended on your point of view and your in your taste. My brother and I would listen to rock and roll. We'd listen to AM, KFI. KHJ, switch to FM, we'll listen to the Mighty Met, KLOS, K-Rock, major ones, pretty decent ones too, and we'd listen to K-Earth and K-R-L-A, Art of the Don Steel, Shotgun Kelly, Shingun Clay. Still. Still. That thumping you hear in the background is the condenser. The pads are dripping, so I got dripping into the, I got the condensation dripping into the bucket behind me. But still, thinking about things like that, I was just listening to movie themes, and it just kind of dawned on me what kind of movie themes I really ran into. I mean, as soon as a movie I saw made an impact on me, I remembered the theme. A few sci-fi movies left and right, if I was seeing them on the big screen or on the smaller screen. Star Trek, Star Wars, anything. Uh, there'll be another few. Jaws. I had to wait until I was older to see that one because when you're a young kid, seeing a, uh, seeing a shark like that kind of scares a kid at me. You know? Really would. You had to understand about movie magic. And then when you're a young kid, it's like, what? But the themes, the movie themes, would stick in your head. The soundtracks. Certain moves. Now, getting back to one thing I was trying to remember was an album. Uh, my family would collect albums like crazy. We used to have a good collection of albums, too. A whole bunch of music of different sorts, of different types. Including storybook albums that you couldn't find anymore. Biblical, if you want it. Science fiction, if you love it. Me, I did. And then there was this one album that talked about drug abuse. That's what brought me up thinking about the other television shows I got myself involved with. An old Jack Webb Dragnet series. Blue Boy was the guy's name. The character's name. He was so much in the LSD he turned his kids on and made him sick, but he went for the ultimate high and ultimate ride, and then he went skyrocketing to the stairway of heaven at the end of the film. And that was near the basis of the album, I remember. Uh, things get a little easier once you understand. Things get a little easier once you understand. Stuck with me all this time. He even got it on YouTube somewhere. This album was regarding dealing with the straight-laced people who grew up in the 30s, 40s, and 50s who have now got their own kids dealing with the 60s and 70s with the free love and the drug abuse and the uh, controlling parents. And... Um, the album was trying to reach 
both sides. I was trying to reach the parents and the kids about the dangers of drug abuse and about suicide, how to communicate with your kids. And the problem was, during this time, you had a hard time communicating with every, anybody. You really did. There was a lot of kids killing themselves during that time. They didn't understand. How can they understand about drugs? How could they? I mean... Drugs are, pe are prevalent. In this day and age right now, for the past three or four years, roughly, they legalized marijuana in the state of California. Certain times, certain places, you can actually do marijuana. The Mary Jane, the blunts, the joints, whatever they call them these days. I don't give a about the shaft they're smoking up. And be like, hey, dude, I like this, I'm high. Well, be my guest. I'd seen people get high. And then I'd see people crash and burn. My brother, too many damn times. What's worse is the addiction level gets to the point where even the constant need couldn't even feed it. And when it affects the family to the point where they're going to be throwing your butt down the house, you know you're all out of control, but you still need more and more of it. Now, these days in health classes, in this day and age right now, in 2020, they would tell you that the pleasure center in the head is overstimulated where nothing else matters. You're oversaturated, the brain can't function very well, and the more and more chemicals you put in the body, the more and more you're killing yourself until you actually sprout up daisies or, or become someone else's ashes. And in the meantime, the insanity continues. You're biologically hooked to the damn thing. You can't even get off the damn thing. It's I equate it to the Dorito effect, I call it. You're a foodie. I'm not a foodie. Not really, anyway. I'm genetically fat. By a bloodline. We're all fat people. Some of us can actually have control over it, and others... The gene bypasses for me, unfortunately, my side of the family. My mother and my brother and me are both large as hell. So people keep thinking I overeat because of this damn thing. No, it's genetics. So is type 2. But to continue, you get a bag of Doritos you haven't tasted before. You thought you tasted every single bag of Doritos. And you have a few favorites you like. But this flavor of chip is knocking your ass out. And your pleasure center is going, Wow! What is this? This is the most tremendous thing here! We must have more. Give us more. Give me that damn bag. Now oh, I've got the bag. I got the con where's the contents? Where's the contents? I want more. Give it to me now. <sighs> Ouch! That <laughs> hurts. But. Over dramatized, but what can I say? It's it, it looks silly, but the brain works that way. Okay, the brain wants it. The pleasure centers are going ape over this, and when you get another bag of it, 
you got to get more. It delays commercials. Have it right. You just can't have one. You have to have it all. Now, if you can just try to will yourself to have a few left and right, then that's fine. I just hope your willpower is a hell of a lot stronger than the pleasure centers going ape at this point. That's biology. That's health 101. But people call it behavior, so if you're old and fat, you might as well just scarf it out of you. Who knows? You may be scarfing it out left and right. No, I really wasn't scarfing it out left and right. But I did eat heavy meals. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Sometimes. Sometimes light. My body just likes to get big, that's all. The pleasure center. Anytime it hears or feels something, your brain is chemically drawn and wants more and more and more of it. Soundtracks to me are similar to that. I have to have more and more of the soundtrack. I have to have more and more of the movie music, the different themes, the different types of things to make me feel good. I suppose it's my own drug. I can find the movie Starship Troopers. I can find the movie soundtrack on YouTube. I can start playing this up like crazy. Yeah, I'm also wasting too much time on this one too. But suffice it to say, despite it being a long day, and days are long, and I'm usually sleeping through half of it anyway, the nights are even worse. It is a constant need of doing these damn videos. Another addiction situation in my brain. We'll go for another video like this. Probably in several hours. Probably when I'm in between sleep cycles and I'm barely lucid. Till then, get some sleep, boys and girls.